Please welcome your host, Dion Taylor. Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. I am super stoked about the feature that I will be discussing in this video, which is how you can extend Copilot inside of Dynamics 365 customer service. Let's take a look. So I've already created a prompt and a plugin that I activated here in Dynamics 365 customer service. So I first kind of wanted to show you what that looks like, and then I'm going to show you how I configured that prompt. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to open uh, this particular case. You can see here what is wrong, right? The AirPod, AirPod heater was defective on delivery. And if I scroll down, I can see the AirPod product. And then here we can see the description. So what I actually have done is I created that plugin, that prompt where I'm asking Copilot to show me all of the related cases for a particular product. Now, what it's going to do because of the way that I configured it, I shouldn't have to ask uh, which product I'm looking for. Cause what it should do is it should see that the AirPod is populated here in this product column. So it sh should show me the related cases to the AirPod, AirPod automatically. So let's see if it actually does that. I'm going to say show product cases, right? Because that's kind of what I'm using as my prompt. I can also say, uh, something else like show me all of the related product cases, right? Because this is really natural language that we're using here. But let's take a look and hopefully Copilot is going to uh, to pick up what I'm actually after here. And here you go. You saw that I only said show product cases. I did not say show me product cases for AirPods. So what it's doing right now is again, it's showing me all of the cases that have the AirPod populated as the product over here in this product lookup. Now, if I would run the same prompt from anywhere else, not from within the context of a case, I actually do need to provide the product name for that, right? Otherwise it's not going to, uh, it's not going to know which product it should look at. And what I forgot to show you is if you click here on the check sources, it actually shows you that it used that plugin that I created for this. And again, I'm going to show you how I created that. Now let's see, let me show you what it now looks like if I am doing the same prompt, right? But then from not from within a case record. So let's take a look at that as well. I'm going to go here to my home screen. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to enter show product cases, but I'm going to say now for AirPod, right? Because otherwise it will not know which particular product I'm asking about. So let's see what it's going to do right now. And here you go. Again, we're going to see the same source here, right? Again, that plugin. And we can take a look at all of that related data and it's exactly doing what we want it to do. So now let's take a look so I can show you what exactly I did to create that plugin and then to activate that plugin within Dynamics 365 customer service. If you're going to try this out yourself, then I would definitely recommend doing this in a newly created sandbox. And the reason for that is because today, while these plugins are still in preview, you can't delete those plugins, right? So that's why I'm saying, you know, create a new sandbox and then uh, try it in there. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to, um, you can see here, I'm in Copilot studio. I'm going to navigate here to Copilots. And then what I want to do is I want to extend Copilot in Dynamics 365 customer service, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and click that. And that will now load uh, Copilot in Dynamics 365 customer service. So you can see here that we have some actions here on the front page and I can add an action from within this front page, but I can also click on the actions tab that you see over here. This basically brings me 
to the same screen, right? It's showing me all my actions. I currently don't have any. So I'm going to go ahead and create one. Now, the other thing that you want to keep in mind is that when you're creating an action, you want to make sure that when you're testing this, that you actually have some data in your Dynamics 365 instance, right? So make sure that you do that as well. So I'm going to click on new item here and that will uh, ask me what type of action I want to create, a connector or a prompt. Now in this video, I'm going to focus on the prompts. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that and that will then load your, I don't even know what to call this, your prompt screen or your AI builder prompt screen, whatever we want to call it. So from here, what you're going to do first is you're going to give this prompt a name. I'm going to call this show product cases. And then we have to enter an input. And the input is really what your agents are going to ask for, right? So since, like I said earlier, you kind of saw that when I did the demo, we're looking for a product. And then with this prompt, I want agents to be able to ask Copilot of all of the cases that are related to a particular product. So I'm going to call this product, oh, product name, right? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a product name in that prompt. And again, this is the data that will be provided by your agents. We're also going to put an example in here because as you can see, we have the ability after we build this prompt to test it. So I actually know that one of my products is an AirPod and that's what we're going to use. And that's why I enter the information here that's for testing later. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to tell um, or the copilot, right? When it's using this prompt, what data that I want it to use. So I want it to use the product table. So I'm looking for, here it is, my product table. And then I'm looking for the particular field, which in this case is name, right? We're looking for the product name. On top of that, right, we don't want a whole list of all of the products. We want to filter that out to only show us products, right? With that name, we saw that in the input, that is provided by the agent, right? So that's kind of how we're setting up that data used feature, which again is also in preview. Now we're going to write our prompt. So I'm going to say show cases for, and then I want to show cases for whatever that product name is that they, they are entering, right, in this prompt. So that's why I'm selecting that. Then I'm also going to say, so what I want is I want to look at a list of all related cases, including case numbers, case title and description, right? All the related cases for this product. So now I need to give Copilot access to those columns, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say I want the first thing I said was I want a case number. So I'm going to click on my product table. And as you may know, there's also a relationship between products and cases. That's what we're looking at over here. So I'm going to click on product case. Now I'm in the case table and I want my case number. Boom. I want to use that. So that's kind of how I can add these different columns. I also want to add the case title. So again, I'm going to click on product, right? These are all my columns in the product table. If I scroll further down, you'll see here all of the different relationships that the product table has. But again, we're looking for the case relationship. So I'm just going to enter that in. It's a lot easier. And I'm going to now say case title. And lastly, again, I'm going to say product, I'm going to say case, and I'm going to say description, right? So now I gave Copilot access to all of the different columns in that product table. So now let's go ahead and test our prompt. And we can do that by just clicking here on test prompt so that we can make sure that the response is exactly what we're looking for. 
And here you go. Here are the related cases for the product AirPod. And here you can see the same cases that you saw earlier when I was doing the demo. So from here, all I have to do is click here on finalize prompt. So let's just go ahead and do that. It takes me to this finalized prompt action screen. And from here I can create my prompt action. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. All right, so now that that's been created, we should see it show up here. I try to say that five times in a row really fast, right? Under the actions. The other thing I wanted to mention is if at some point in time you want to change some of those settings in your prompt, you can do that by just clicking here again on that plugin and by just clicking edit, click here on next. And that's going to load that same screen that you just saw earlier when I was putting that prompt together. So let me just give it a second here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And here we go. There we go. Right. So you can make your changes. You can test your prompt and then you can publish that out again. All right. Now what we need to do is we need to go to Dynamics 365 customer service and we need to enable that plugin. So let me show you how we can do that. So here we are in the customer service admin center app, and let me just show you how you can navigate to those plugins that you can turn on and off. So you're going to go here to productivity below the agent experience, and then you'll see the plugins for generative AI, which are in preview today, right over here. So you're going to click here on manage, and that's going to take you to that screen where all of these plugins will be visible. So we should see, here we go. We should see the show product cases plugin that I just created. All you have to do here is just click on this little checkbox and then you can turn it on. Now the next screen is going to allow you to select which agents should have access to this plugin. So you can give this to all act, all agents who have Copilot, or you can say, I want to only give this to specific user roles. From here, we're going to click next. And this field is called, right, the defined inputs field. And this is optional, but let me explain to you what exactly this does, how this works. Now you can see that the data here, right? The record type and the data field, this is not required, right? This is optional, but by mapping this, right? By filling out this information, mapping this input field. And by the way, this input field is that product name field, right? That we created, that we started with when we were creating our prompt. So what you see here, this input product underscore 20 name is what I just showed you in that prompt. So what we can do here is we can actually, as you can see, only select the case table or any related tables, right? Tables that are related to the case table. Those are the only record types that we can put in there. And I'm going to tell you in a second why. What I'm going to do is, what I want to do is I want to use the product column right on the case record. But if I do that from case and then I select a data field, you're going to see that product is not a field that I have access to from here because it's a table. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to look for my product table. Here we go. That's that relationship. And then we're looking for the product name, right? Like we said earlier. So what this does, Right. We can then I'm just going to go ahead and then click next and then save it in a second. But what this does is as follows. So when an agent is asking Copilot now to show the product cases uh, from within the context of a case record. So what I mean by that is I have a case open on the screen and then I prompt Copilot right, to show me the related cases for that product, then the agent doesn't have to specify the product for which they want to view those related cases. Because here you're saying in that case, look at the product lookup and then look at the name. That's what I'm doing. Now, if I 
or if an agent prompts co-pilot outside of the context from a case record, so I don't have a case record open on my screen, you can still have your agents run that prompt, but then you, you will have to enter the product name because, right, we're not looking at that from inside of the context of that case record. That's what this is doing. All right, let's just go ahead and click next. And then from here, I can turn on that plugin and this is just gonna take a second. But now you can see over here, right? This plugin has been enabled. I can see the user access and I can see the inputs are pointing at the product table and the name of that product. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I am super stoked about now being able to extend Copilot inside of Dynamics 365. And on top of that, how easy was that, right? Super easy. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another video again. Thanks for watching. Until next time.